Today, Nedora Friday, Deaf Man, is going to talk about Logic Apps and Microsoft Flow. In addition to Steph Jan talking about Microsoft Flow and Logic Apps, I figured I'd give an update on Integrate 2017 and a blog post that I've recently written around my topic now that all of the agendas have been released. In addition, last week I had asked people for feedback around what they'd like to see on future episodes of Middleware Friday. I've got some good responses so far, so I figured I'd share that with you in this episode. So I know what you may be thinking. You may be thinking that this is an episode that's going to put Logic Apps versus Microsoft Flow and try to determine what is the best tool for people to use. But I think the bottom line is it depends on your persona, you know, whether or not you're a developer, whether or not you're a citizen business user. And the bottom line is each tool is going to have its strengths. So I think Step Jan does a really good job of balancing out these different perspectives. With the hockey playoffs, underway, I figured it was a good opportunity to put these two technologies together and, and see what the outcome is. In this picture, we can see the Ottawa Senators playing the Pittsburgh Penguins. I'm going for Ottawa. I used to live in Ottawa, so go Sens. Hi, I'm Stephen Riggs, and I like to talk about um, task automation using either Flow or Logic App in the ways of, of employee empowerment. So if you look at task automation, uh, it's kind of who you're going to want to give control. Um, do you want to give control to the employee, the power user? Then there's a technology within Office 365 called Microsoft Flow, which is built on top of, of Logic Apps. So Logic App is more uh, defined and used for or intended to, to develop as an IT pro. So said, say you do not want to give the employee or the power user within a business the control to kind of task automate um, certain things. Then you give the control to the developer or IT pro, say, okay, I'm going to do this for you and then you can do um, your job in that way. So if it's more mission critical kind of thing, then you could say, okay, now I'm gonna give that control to an IT pro, which has a more versatile, versatile set of, of, of features and capabilities within Logic Apps versus what you can see in Flow, but you will see that in the demo in a minute. So you can think about certain scenarios where um, employees kind of wanna have control over, the, over their own um, data and documents and you can think about scenarios like moving documents or syncing documents, or retrieval of data for CRM, getting notification for incidents, and so forth. So in that way, he kind of has control and he can do it the way he feels like it. But sometimes that's maybe not possible or when it's more kind of mission critical, you could say, or it's getting a little bit more complex. You can say, hey, IT, can you do this for me? And, you know, Logic App's pretty, pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's, it's serverless, uh, it's serverless, so you can do server integration with various parts within Azure and SaaS solutions. So you can really set that up quickly too to give that uh, employee or power user or business kind of their fulfill their needs, but pretty quickly. So you can empower them through through that way. You can either give them control, empower them, or you can um, facilitate them in a pretty uh, fast manner. So if you look at um, demo, this is kind of the um, the diagram, you have a document that enters into to OneDrive and you want to have to sync it up to Google Drive. Let's say it's something interdepartmental, you still give them freedom or what technology you want to use. So one department could say, okay, no, I'm going to use OneDrive. They would say, no, no, we'll be using Google Drive. Or maybe it's between two, two enterprises. So one uploads the document into to OneDrive and have it synced up to, to another company and use Google Drive. And you can do this either through Microsoft Flow, so then you would create you give the power to uh, the employee itself, so he can do it, or you can say, okay, IT Pro or developer, now you're gonna set up this process. So if you look at the, um, the Logic App, you set up um, three connections in this way, uh, if you look at it, so it's a connection to the OneDrive, to that folder, and the interval, it checks kind of every second, and then it's going to create that file into a Google Drive in another path. So that's file name, file content, and then an email is going to be sent. And if you look at Flow, so this is the environment within a Microsoft Office. So you can get to it, and it's kind of similar. 
and you can see that you know the flow is built on top of, of logic app so you can see kind of similar ways you know enterprise a goes to b and sends an email so if you look at um already done this so you can look just have a look you know look of, of you know how to run basically goes when the document ends it, it goes in you can see that you can, can even go to raw in and outputs and you can drill down and drill into it and that same accounts for if you look at the flow you can click and then you can see the same the only thing is that you cannot go into raw in and output so um, it's a little bit less first time you would say so you have of course more control and capability if you look at uh, uh, logic apps um, you can have diagnostics um, there's there's more tooling around it um, compared to um, a flow you can see that here in this blade and also access to it etc etc so this is just the uh, the one drive environment there's docu two documents here the documents are also here in the google drive and i also received two notifications here about those two documents just kind of what, what happens uh, one if you look into it so this is the document hey it's been created in a folder and it's got that size and this is another uh, document it's got a different size so it is kind of a nutshell uh, uh, what happens in that demo or at least this is how it flows I mean this is how it, how it kind of works and it's pretty similar but then there's some consideration if you look into the technology it's kind of who you want to give control and what's about the uh, particular task animation is it pretty uh, mission critical and complex that you could say okay I'll give this to ID Pro developer and they still can uh, create this pretty fast uh, because it's kind of serverless so within the uh, environment you just know what the requirements are you can build it and say hey here's your uh, I've automated your task and uh, you can proceed doing other stuff or you can say no you can get your own control it's not that mission critical you want to do a call more kind of self-service you can say okay you can you can do this yourself within the browser so logic app is going to be built out in your browser or visual studio and um, that's kind of the difference there's also, if you look at the DevOps perspective, uh, there's not much around the flow than just the thing. So you can look into runs that succeeded or failed, and that kind of stuff is pretty low. If it's really that complex, then you probably would go to IT Pro developer anyway. If you look at the DevOps side from, from the logic app, you get source control, you get testing, support, automation, um, the Azure resource management, and so forth. So there's a, there's a lot around there. Um, from manageability perspective, either you, you do it through uh, both is in the browser, but it's uh, flowmicrosoft.com. So that's one way you can look at it and, and work, um, manage your, your flows. And the other one would particularly more be the logic app um, through the Azure portal. Security wise, uh, there's some data, some need encryption um, for, for, sen uh, for sensitive data. Um, if you look at logic app, you can have either Azure security, Azure Active Directory, um, audit logs and there's some more around it so this is based on um, an R, uh, a blog post I wrote in the past so you can find that also on the Bistro 360 uh, blog as you can see so how you can build that flow how you can build that in a logic app what happens so it's more descriptive or at least explain more in detail what happens and you can see that and you can read the ball about it um, there's some choices I explained these two as you can see there's some considerations uh, when you look at security uh, costs or uh, you know from a governance perspective if you don't want to if you want to prevent that there are too many um, flows or, or logic apps I mean, you know, are running around and you need to kind of governance too because there's costs involved in the end so you want to have a look at that okay so this kind of um, if you look at an employee empowerment perspective, you can either give it control to the user, uh, giving them flow, or you can say, no, I'm going to give that control or give that control to my IT people and they're going to do it, but they can do it pretty quickly. Okay. Thanks, Steph Jan, for putting that together. Really appreciate it. This is the third episode that Steph Jan has contributed to, and I really appreciate uh, him bringing a new perspective to the show. I hope you enjoy it as well. Today on... Community Corner, we're going to talk about a blog post that I recently wrote. And the title of the blog post is Integrate 2017. I've got a link here where you can actually get more details about the event. 
Uh, the event is put on by BizTalk360, uh, one of the partners of this show. And they always do a great job. This is the fourth time that, I've, that I'll have been out to London uh, for a uh, BizTalk360 event. Previously, they were known as BizTalk Summits. More recently, they're now known as Integrate, and they're always, it's always a great show. There's always a, a lot of smart people there, so it's a great networking opportunity as well. Now, you might be wondering, after 20 episodes, do I have anything left to talk about? And some days I wonder that myself, but I have been holding back, and what I've been holding back on is bots. So I've been working for the last couple months on a demo bot that I could use Initially, it came out of some, some work at my employer where we wanted to investigate how feasible bots were, but also starting to dig into some of the cognitive side of the world and also machine learning. So I'm actually going to bring that to Integrate. And the title of my talk is Give Your Bots Connectivity with Azure Logic Apps. And kind of the core message here is that bots are useless on their own and they need connectivity and they may need to connect to system of record systems like SAP or SharePoint Online or other applications like ServiceNow. So now we can actually go ahead and bring this connectivity using Logic Apps and the benefits of a serverless architecture in order to provide more value to our bots. So largely my, my talk will be centered on the Microsoft Bot Framework, Azure Logic Apps and Azure Cognitive Services. So I'm very much looking forward to attending a Integrate and I'm very and I'm very much looking forward to putting on this session. Next, let's talk about feedback and survey results. So last week I asked you for some feedback and so far I've got some great feedback. I really appreciate it. And really what I was looking for was one question I was asking and I just wanted you to check off the different topics that you'd like to see more of on future episodes of Middleware Friday. And to no surprise, a lot of the integration, core integration technologies like Logic Apps and BizTalk and Service Bus were all included, so that's great to see. Also uh, pleasantly surprised to see so much interest in BizTalk. So um, even after the last three sessions I've provided have all been focused on BizTalk, uh, this is good feedback that allows me to invest more in it, knowing that more people want to hear about BizTalk. I've also included blockchain, which is a more of a fringe technology. There absolutely is a middleware component to it, just not so much in the, the middleware that we're used to thinking about. 42% of people have expressed some interest, so I will try to fit something in here sometime. Uh, I won't claim to be a, a blockchain expert, but it is a technology I've been spending a lot of time on for the last year learning about and I do find it rather compelling. In addition, Stream Analytics and IoT have had some strong showing. I've got bots there as well, API management, and then there was a couple others. Uh, one was around CRM and CRM Dynamics AX integration, and then also Azure Data Lakes. So I do know that Steph Jan has been working on a CRM online demo, so I think I'll leave that technology to him. Um, Azure Data Lakes, I have never actually used it. It is a technology we are exploring at work, but uh, perhaps I'll get someone with a little bit more experience to do a guest show on that one. Uh, I'm going to leave the SurveyMonkey link open. Uh, feel free to continue to pro provide your feedback. I don't see why uh, this is a, a one-time deal. So continue to provide your feedback and I'll continue to provide sessions based on what you're interested in because I want to bring as much value as I can. Also, follow me on Twitter, I'm either at Weirzy or at Middleware Fry for content specific to Middleware Friday. Once again, thank you BizTalk360 for being a great partner of the show. Uh, we'll see you next week and I'll leave you with some music credits. <laughs>